ないかも分かる<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> Have you ever noticed how it's always the same old comedy routines on TV? Probably because those gatekeepers and commissioning don't understand what today's audiences really want. Well, what if I told you that you can get great comedy that's too good for telly in a brand new service from Club LOL? And what if I told you you could see a brand new act every day, and it does need to be during the day, from all your favourite underground comedian, Dr. Shrunk? Now you're interested. Well, here's the best bit the price. No monthly subscription. No setup fee. It won't even cost you a single bell. Just sling a piece of fruit in the general direction of Dr. Shrunk, and you can hear up to one joke every day of the week. That's right, an apple a day is this doctor's pay. That's Dr. Shrunk on Demand every day this week, only at Club LOL. As we've previously established, you don't have to do anything in Animal Crossing. If you want, you can just show up. Maybe water some flowers. Check in with your favourite animal pals, do a bit of fishing, pull up a few weeds if you spot them. Or you can take ownership of your happy place, aim for perfection, and literally go to town on it. I'm talking showing up every day of the year, breeding rare flowers, earning framed portraits of every villager, filling your museum with all the fish, insects, fossils, and art, giving your townsfolk the best public works, keeping the ground spotlessly free of weeds and garbage, and earning the highest praise from those pencil pushers at the town hall. But、uh, that does sound like quite a lot of work. I'm your mayor, David Thayer, and this is Ass Town, a podcast about Animal Crossing from High Score Club. In this episode, I'll take you through a rudimentary six step plan to get us just a little bit closer to perfection, helped along the way by my guest mayors. Let's kick things off with Ho and Martin to talk about step one. <laughs> Mastering the art of letter writing. One thing that I am really, really keen to do is to get the picture portraits from my villagers.、Mm-hmm. So I tend to have favourites. It's Barold. And I always woo them by sending them letters, but I'm not very creative when it comes to it. Like it's all about the present giving. So I'd attach like special things to letters to make sure that they would like me. And then hopefully get their picture portrait so that I could put that in my house. And did you write your letters as though they were genuine letters to a person that you cared about in the game, or was it all kind of meta and you kind of knew that they weren't really reading them, but you're going to include keywords or write it for other people's entertainment? Was it just very functional? Quite frequently, they'd just be functional. So it would just go, blah, 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 just some, type some stuff in it. Not even, not even actual words, just jig, even, jig, 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 jig. yeah, just random garbage. But I'd always attach a good gift,、mm. and then I'd send it to them, and then they'd send me a nice letter back. But to be honest, I think the letters are probably my least favorite thing about my inventory management.、Mm. It's like I hate having to clear out old letters to receive new ones. But then again, you get good things in the post, so it was. That's always my least favourite bit of the game.、Mm. I quite like all the letter papers; they're really cute. But I don't actually like the letter writing part. It was fun once we started visiting each other's towns, and then we'd have letters that would get shown to other villagers,、mm. and so that was always really good. I really enjoyed that. But yeah, mostly it was just functional because just gotta gotta woo them, get those pictures, put them in my house. If they got a red frame, they get put into the red bit of my room for feng shui.、Mm. You know that whole thing. So it sounds like you're probably writing quite a high volume of letters. It it depends how many villagers I'm trying to woo, and to be honest, like I've got like I've got certain favourites. Right. So you know I don't try for every animal. Okay. Like I don't like the big bears. Well, right.、Mm. No need to cast aspersions on you know a whole group of animals. Yeah, they're just they're just not very cute. In the GameCube one, which is my first exposure to it, letter writing is so core, especially to that game, and the letter writing has kind of, for me, taken on less significance as time has gone by. Sadly, with the letter writing, because you because you want to kind of keep relationships up to make villagers happy and make them stay, there's kind of a positive to not writing to them. In that, it basically means that. You'll get villagers cycling into your town. I've never done that with awareness in my mind, but it has been in the back of my mind. 
when I need to make a decision, do I go to Tangy's birthday party? So does that mean that you're quite a frequent letter writer even now, like with that heritage of doing that in the in the earlier games? Do you continue I, to do that? I like writing the letters. It's interesting to see the way that, that the characters hold on to the letters or absorb information from the letters. I can't think on top of my head exactly how detailed that whole system is now. But certainly when playing the GameCube version, there was a definite sense that you're always testing the game to see what it would do, how smart the characters were, what it was going to remember. And the letters were a great way of kind of playing around with that system. And also understanding the villagers' personalities a little bit more. So I feel like if you're not writing letters, you're not getting the most out of the game. Hmm. But writing letters is the real chore of Animal Crossing sometimes. How straight would he play with those letters? I mean, would he dare be, say something really outlandishly rude in one or? No, I don't have the heart to do that. Right. No, I would never, I'd never be rude to an Animal Crossing villager. If they had the capacity to say something really bad, which they don't. They can be quite snarky sometimes. They're never racist though. No, 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 no. <laughs> If they were racist, I'd be like, no, don't do that. If they, you know, made an off-colour joke about something. I think the idea of Nintendo <laughs> writing racist <laughs> characters into Animal Crossing. <laughs> That's what, not what a mistake that would be. Oh, that'll be on that'll be like a clone game on Steam within three years, I'm certain. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I don't have the heart to be rude to them. I will definitely write a short letter. If I'm trying to kind of get out of the obligation of writing a letter, I will just write something like Hi, Blue Bear. You're cool. Bye. <laughs> Here's a gift. Here's a gift, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I find if I'm playing with friends is, then the letters do will become a bit more florid because there's a reason to do those letters other than just testing the, the character's intelligence. It's more like well, now we can make the letters really weird and see what mm -hmm. bubbles up to the surface later. I think that was always my hope is that it's going to be found again one day. Did you ever send letters in a bottle? I think that was in the DS one? I think I did, but I can't actually remember it. How, how did it go? You can buy a bottle in the shop, you can write a letter, and you dump it in the sea, and it will turn up in someone else's game on their beach. Oh. But I think you have to be a, whatever the name of the internet connection service was back on those consoles. Oh, okay. And I can't remember if it was World World or um, Let's Go to the City where it was first done. But yeah, when you connected to the internet, it would then transmit your letter somewhere else to one of your contacts, I think, or maybe even to a so random stranger. Did, was it anonymous? The bottle? No, I, do, I think it would say it was from oh, okay. Martin and Steen. Yeah. Did, did you ever write anything alarming? Not alarming, no, but I wrote some <laughs> weird stuff for sure. Yeah. It's really worth that. checking back on actually. Should bring that back into the mix. I loaded up my old copy of Wild World from 2006 and to my surprise genuinely found the following note in a bottle that I composed but never sent. Dear Some Stranger, Someone has been sending me crude photographs of a dog's behind. Was it you? If so, thanks. So, uh, probably for the best it never left my inventory, but should give you some sense of the tone I was going for. I think letter writing is one of the systems in Animal Crossing that's meant to feel magic, that you can figure out for yourself, and have fun testing the limitations. But if you wanted to peek under the hood and find out how it actually works, we've included a great article about it in the show notes for this episode. On the other hand, Feng Shui, which I apologise for pronouncing inconsistently throughout this episode, is an obtuse system that you can nevertheless learn about in-game, if you pick up hints from villagers and characters like Lyle. Which brings us to step two. <laughs> Feng Shui your way to prosperity. Here's Charlie. I think it was quite difficult to Feng Shui my house because of the sheer quantity of stuff in it. I think at the start it was something I tried to keep in mind and then quite quickly it was just, I just gave up on. I think I was more into collection of points through quantity right. as opposed to direction of items. Yeah, I mean, that, that's another system that I really don't fully understand and I feel like it might impact luck as well. Yeah. I, I really wonder. It's very obtuse and you yeah. have to look up wikis about it really yeah. to really fully understand it. So I love reading a wiki. Mm. I don't necessarily love putting into place what the Wikipedia tells me to do, but I love reading a wiki about something very complicated that I'm just like, oh, I'm never going to do this. But Glad that it exists. <laughs> what a lovely five minute read that was. All I care about is making sure that my vision for the room is correct. 
and the Feng Shui system in the game means that you can't do a lot of things there. So never. My goal with the rooms is always to make the room special and uniform and so it makes sense to me. So that's out. I figured it out by talking to is it a little otter? Oh Lyle. Lyle, Lyle. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Old Lyle, who I think has maybe the best personality out of anybody in Animal Crossing. I love the way he talks. Where he's like pat boom, we'll be there, real stealthy, 6 a.m., you won't even know. Like, that's how I imagine yeah. he talks, but his yeah, text yeah, yeah. is so good. But from talking to him and, like, getting your, like, HHA rating or whatever, he gives you little pointers, so that's the only way I've figured out how to do the Feng Shui thing. But I've got the yeah. highest HHA trophies and points. Like, is it 150, like, the max? I don't know. I've never managed to master it. Oh, I've got all the biggest rooms in my house. So I've got behind, side inside plus upstairs and a basement and they're all the biggest rooms so i managed to like level up my house and be mortgage free uh, mortgage three at 30 <laughs> in animal crossing not in real life still rent in real yeah. life um but uh that was like super exciting but i think once you've got really big rooms it's quite easy to or easier to fill them with I think you can get like 50 items in each room um, mm. max before it tells you you can't fit any more stuff in. And I think if you put cool stuff, especially if it's cool stuff that you got from the island or people have given you or you've got from talking to Gulliver when he's washed up on shore, like kind of specialish items or customized stuff through Cyrus, then you get like mega points. So I'd kind of done that stuff and kind of figured out that my score was getting better when I had like more unusual stuff or kind of complete sets of furniture and stuff. And then... He gives you little pointers about, is it like green in the east and is it red in the north? I can't remember. But there's definitely something to do with colours and directions and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I made my whole like east wing a green room. So it's got the whole green series of furniture in it. It's got green carpet, green walls, anything that is green and like a, a cool item that's kind of come from Gulliver or like from the island or something. It's got green, all the green plants. So I'd buy the kind of most interesting plants at Leaf's shop as well. So big cactuses. And I think I've got like a, a full cactus collection. And that whole room is like green and plants. And then I don't think I'd done like much else. I got really obsessed with getting the cabin series furniture because it was real kind of furniture I actually wanted because it was really folk arty and it looked a bit Eastern European. Um, it just reminded me of my grandma's house in Ukraine and stuff. So I like really obsessed with getting that whole series. Uh, so that's my bedroom, like the upstairs is, I think I've completed it as well. So I got the complete series of that, which probably helped my scar as well. I'm not a big supporter of Feng Shui in real life. I think it's bollocks. Like, for instance, we had some of my friends from Hong Kong believe in feng shui and they thought that they were getting sick all the time because their bedroom was arranged so that the head of the bed was pointing at the toilet. And so that's why that she was getting ill all the time. And so she had to rearrange her room so that her head didn't point at the toilet. And then she said that she felt better. There was also things like you shouldn't have your head pointing to a door when you sleep at night because you're inviting bad things to happen to you. Even worse things if you point it to the toilet. Your head should always be up against the wall and not like just pointing out into the middle of a room because that apparently invites bad things as well. All of it's bollocks and then there's these people who will give you advice on it and make loads of money from poor people who just want to have a better life. But in Animal Crossing it's a whole different thing. Because it's actually real. It's actually real. As far as we know. I think it definitely is real. So I was getting much better prices on the stalk market. I think I was getting more money when I was shaking trees to get money out of it. Oh yeah, the whole rocks business, that was great. Ah yes, the rocks business. Wandering your village, pranging rocks with a shovel to see if bells come out, is of course one of the central routines of daily life in Animal Crossing. Every day a different rock will fire out sacks of bells when struck, and if you do it repeatedly in quick succession, the number of bells per sack will increase. Why this happens is never explained, so best stop asking questions and just get bashing. You can also find bugs by hitting rocks, and in New Leaf, every day a new rock will appear in town that breaks to reveal a gem or ore when struck. In the original Animal Crossing, Wild World and Let's Go to the City, players can use Feng Shui to increase the maximum number of bells produced by these money rocks. So collecting and arranging furniture carefully really does influence not only your score with a Happy Home Academy, but your luck. 
Until you start looking out for it, luck is a pretty well-hidden system. But if you've ever found yourself repeatedly tripping over when running around town, or had an unusually good windfall from shaking a tree, maybe you'll start to notice that your luck can change too. And when you do, you'd better hope that the travelling fortune teller Katrina is in town, so you can proceed to step three of this most rudimentary of plans. Step three. Get lucky. The thing I didn't understand, and I, maybe I'm making it up, there was like a, a fortune teller, mm-hmm. a fortune teller cat. Yeah. But I don't really understand anything that she did. So each time you went and spoke to her, she would tell you what the lucky item of the town is What's that day. What's a lucky item? Well, it's an item which I think if you wear, like it'll say today's lucky item is some glasses. If you wear glasses or an accessory or whatever, then better things will happen to you. So like where there's random chance involved, you're likely to be more lucky. Like when you're picking up a random item or hitting a rock and bells come out of it or oh. some of those other events. Oh, I forgot about the bell rock. Mm. And you too must forget about the bell rock while we consider Katrina, the mysterious and perhaps misunderstood fortune telling cat that Timothy mentioned. Katrina has appeared in every version of Animal Crossing, sometimes just passing through, and sometimes with a permanent shock. She's enigmatic, has a spooky reputation, and talks in riddles. But it's worth paying her attention, because it turns out that luck is real in this world, and so are Katrina's powers. In the games before New Leaf, the very act of asking Katrina for your fortune would change your luck. A lucky fortune would typically mean finding more bells or getting better items. An unlucky fortune would mean a higher chance of tripping and falling over while running, or your luck might just be neutral that day. Sometimes she offers other services too. In Let's Go to the City, Katrina would offer one good luck charm for the town every month. For example, a hidden charm that helps you obtain ancient rewards would increase the number of fossils available. But there's a catch. To activate the charm, a player from another town would have to visit using the Wii's Wi-Fi connection and perform a specific task, like catching a certain animal, planting something, or writing a good letter. The effects of the charm would then be felt by the players the next day. In New Leaf, talking to Katrina doesn't change your luck. She really is telling your fortune by revealing the kind of luck you're experiencing, and how you can improve it. If you have the misfortune to be suffering really bad luck, for a high cost, she'll even sell you an accessory that's guaranteed to turn things around. And how do you know when you're in a spot of bad luck? Well, as well as falling over while running, you might... Oh, pardon me. I was just taking a seat there. What was I saying? Yes, as well as clumsiness... Oh, balls. As I was saying, anyway, bad luck makes you hear a farting sound sometimes when you sit on furniture. Ah, that's better. Once you've optimised your luck, you'll probably want to try your hand at something more wholesome, more tangible. Something that will impress both visitors and a certain someone at the town hall. It's time for step four. Flower breeding. Here's the very green-fingered. I used to organise all the flowers by like type, so I'd have like pansies in a certain place and the cosmos in a certain place and kind of, I think when you've got perfect town status you get those like snowdroppy looking ones. Have you got those in your town? I've not got perfect town status, so... Have you not? No. Oh man, I got that on my second like chunk of sad times in my life but also stressful times and playing Animal Crossing a lot. So yeah, when I started coming back to it that's when I managed to get perfect town status. So I think you get like a golden watering can so you can water like a grid of nine uh, yeah. flowers at once, which is really helpful because I think that was one of the reasons I stopped playing it because I was like, all my plants are dying and it takes me half an hour to water them all. So yeah, the golden watering can's amazing. And and then you get like little snowdroppy ones. So I was super happy with those, but I'd kind of gather all the different other types of flowers together. Then stuff would just happen. So I'd get some orange ones or some pink ones. And then I think once by accident, I got gold roses maybe a gold cosmos and I immediately just plucked them and put them in my house I didn't know what to do with them and that's the Hmm. only time I've ever made anything special (laughs) it seems to be working I think to get that perfect town status you've got to at least keep your flowers alive which is 
in my world, tough enough by itself. I think your town is probably on a, a whole different level to mine. I have a slight frustration that there's still kind of a, an element of randomness to it. Um, so while like uh, I have quite a few snowdrop or lily of the valley flowers, which come from a very specific thing, um, the, like the perfect town thing, if you keep it up for long enough, they'll start appearing. Mm. Um, and I kind of felt like that, that to me makes a lot of sense. It's very black and white, do the thing, the thing will happen. Whereas sometimes there's a, I hate watering plants. And so I find, I find plant breeding while I get it, I find it very annoying. And there's still an element of randomness to it. It's like, I'm doing all the things and you're not giving me, I just want that thing so I can tick it off the list. Mm -hmm. Why are you doing this? Please stop. I wish there was a way you could turn off trampling flowers by running. Mm. I feel like that's unfair. Sometimes you'll just forget. I think you just need to not run. Yeah, but... You need to respect the town, don't no, you? No, I'm in a rush. I feel like Animal Crossing is always trying to slow you down. Exactly. You've got to pay £300,000 for this tether. You can't just have it. No. Oh, no. No, you're exactly right. It does force you to slow down because you've... You know, the cafe, for example, is great. And from playing previous games, I knew straight away that I wanted a, a cafe I also want to have the police station, which <gasps> a police station. It's a police station, which isn't in the game yet. For something like the police station, you have to wait for one of the villagers to request it. So you have to have them say, "Oh, wouldn't it be great if we had a police station?" And then it become added to your list of possible public works. Oh. Then you have to choose it off the list, make it your one public work that you want to have available, and then you've got to get people to fund it, or you've got to fund it yourself. And it's oh. not going to be a small amount of money. It's going to be money you have to accrue over many days oh. once you've done that and then it takes time to build it you can't just have it straight away it has to happen overnight so the whole game is spread out over days and 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 days wow listening to that guy who's me makes playing animal crossing sound like a bit of a chore but i promise it isn't i mean in real life is it a chore to routinely complete a tedious but necessary task again and again i don't think so here's charlie with a more philosophical approach to public works i feel like i've not done enough public works i know that for ages the wisteria trellis was something i really wanted and also there's like a nice light up arch mm. and those are things i really lusted after for a while i know the windmill was something that just took forever and made me quite cross but i try to not i think because early on i i would do that thing where you look through all the public works and all the things you can't afford and go i'm going to do that and that and that and then you get cross and they're not there and you find yourself earmarking like space for a very long time for things you don't have and can't afford right so now i try and do it kind of like a little at a time where i'll just do this thing and then once that's done i'll pick the next thing so you're talking about having like a buddhist approach with no attachments <laughs> yeah. you don't want to invest yourself in something that doesn't exist i think it's very easy yeah i think it's very easy with animal crossing to get so obsessed about being like when I make this room bigger, when I do this, blah, 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 and I want to be able to actually enjoy the lovely town that I've spent ages, you know, mm. a long time making nice for everyone. Um, so to treat it as kind of a long term project rather than trying to desperately rush ahead mm -hmm. and then sit there going, well, I have nothing left that I want. That feels nicer. Luckily, there's something really fun about the daily routine in Animal Crossing. Every day there are new marks on the ground to indicate buried items like fossils, gyroids or pitfalls. There are bugs to catch, which change with the seasons, and fish to quite literally fish out of the water. What you do with these items is up to you. You can keep your favourites in your home, enter fish and bug catching competitions, or sell them on at the retail store. But if you really want to achieve perfection, you'll need to donate them to bladders. That's right. Step five of this rudimentary six-step plan is to... Complete your museum collections. Here's Ed. I did like to collect stuff. And that was definitely one of my objectives to try and complete all of those. I was, fell a little bit short. Playing it again makes me want to kind of jump back in. Fill in the gaps. Because I'm only about 10 short on the fish, I think. So... Yeah. The fishing is always quite satisfying. You say you're only about 10 short, but it's, it's going to end up being that in order to get those 10 fish, you'd have to play it for 10 different months. Well, this is it. I think the fish... I think the fossils are the easiest because I don't think they're... It really matters the season of the no. fossils and you just kind of eventually find them all. It's just a question of putting in the hours. I used to love collecting the fossils because there was always like three or four every day plus a pitfall seed. So you'd know where they were and how to find them. Yeah. So I really liked that. Like it was just something that you could always do and you'd try and spot one of those like marks where you can see on the ground where things are buried. So I really liked the fossils, but then I completed them and that was the beginning of the end. Because... <laughs> 
I didn't know how to get all the insects and I didn't know how to get the fishes. I think I'm one fish short from having a complete fish collection. And it's the, is it cephalopod? The really ancient fish. Yeah, old kind of dinosaur looking thing. Yeah, it's um, a coalanth, I think. Uh, nope. Oh, is it coalanth? Is that, is that yeah. how you see it? It isn't. I, I've only seen it written down and I'm, I'm, I'm no good in my northern accent. Coelacanth. I heard whispers of it like it appears after it's rained on like the east coast or something and I'd just fish and I'd just be getting horse mackerel and I'd get really angry. <laughs> Like, why can't I get my last fish? Yeah, sea bass. I'm sick of sea bass and horse yeah. mackerels. It's weird. In real life, sea bass is a nice thing, but in Animal Crossing, just everywhere. Is it delicious? I assume so. I've not. I see it on menus, and it sounds exciting. High end. Yeah, actually, red snapper in Animal Crossing has made me want to eat red snapper in real life. Oh. In some of the, the earlier games, the red snapper was the high-valued fish. Oh, that... was it? Was that the one? Like you can get those. There's a certain time of day or a certain day of the week or something that. I can fish and get loads of red snappers. Yeah, well, in earlier games, that was my main source of income was fishing red snappers and selling them. I think I've still got loads of insects to get, but fish, I think I was obsessed with that one last fish, which I still haven't got. There was a brief period where I got into insects, especially on the island. Mm -hmm. Mega time on the island, to be honest. That was kind of where I got my like nouveau riche kind of vibe on. So was that doing the free play, just roaming around the island catching stuff or were you doing all the mini games as no, well free play going at sundown mm -hmm. when all the juiciest beetles are out right and then creeping anti-clockwise around the island catching them all off the trunks of trees that's some good tips yeah it is frustrating being asked for a really obscure beetle and thinking mm. how am i ever going to get that mm. now it, i know how it works really well and you can make an awful lot of money mm. <laughs> very very quickly hmm hmm Lovely, juicy beetles. <clears throat> Speaking of beetles, some of you might know that in real life, food and textile dye can be extracted from certain insects. This doesn't seem to be the case in Animal Crossing, where in New Leaf you can customise your furniture using gems or ore discovered as part of that whole rocks business. Meanwhile, the Able Sisters sewing machine is always the key to designing your own patterns for clothing. If you're truly hardcore, then you'll know all about the final part of the six-step plan. <laughs> Make your mark. I got really heavily into designing my own clothes. I think that was in Wild World. Yeah, I've always been quite into that. In fact, I think I got into it in New Leaf as well, and I created myself a Totoro costume, hmm. which I combined with the, the cat ears that you can buy from the Able Sisters. And then I made a dress with a white tummy with little kind of grey arrows on it, just like a Totoro. Very uh, cute. And then, and then I'd carry the leaf umbrella. Mm. Yeah. A great costume. Yeah, it's really good. If you come to my town, if you come to Imperial, I'll take you to the Able Sisters where you can buy that costume. Ooh. Mm. Got really into the hats, actually. I really like the Halloween hats that you could buy. Those were really good. I especially like the wolf one. Mm. Well, they were almost costumes rather than hats, weren't they? They yeah. were the whole whole head affair. Yeah. Helmets in the game, I think they were called. Yeah, that's right. Mm. They were really good. I really wanted to buy a crown, but that was always way too expensive never saved up enough money to do it because I'd be like well I've got to put that money either towards my mortgage or to the public works so I suppose that's the kind of thing that you'll reward yourself with once you're a really really successful mayor yeah just wander around wearing a crown going yep yeah, this is my town this is my crown yeah exactly I was kind of into crafting for a bit I'm certain there was something to do with I pointed out a shell in my town I built. I remember being really proud of that. I think that took quite a lot of faff to get bits for. Is that like a public work that you've crafted? No, it was just it was just an object for my house. Oh, you right. know, from like uh, Cyrus when you give him like gems and he makes things all shiny. Mm. I think you took him a shell and a selection of gems and like a record or something, and he creates like a beautiful jeweled shell that makes music or something like that. I remember being really happy about that. I could be completely wrong. If I've made it up, doesn't it sound great? It does sound great. Well, <laughs> but it, I think it's real. It was an impressive item, however you acquired it. But yeah. For that to have been the way it happened is is impressive. I think that's it. I think the temptation is always there just to sell the gems. Rather yeah. than changing the colour of your sofa or whatever. I, I mean, I, because I, for ages I would, I kept gemming things just to try and add some consistency to my house. Until I realised I don't want a, a sofa that's like hewn from rock. It looks really uncomfortable. You really, really don't want self furnishings that are made of minerals. It's not good for your back. 
I think I read somewhere or heard somewhere that you could, if you collected a complete set of like a T-Rex or something, you can take it to Cyrus and he'll make it a miniature piece of furniture for your house. Wow. Yeah, that was a new thing that I really wanted to do because I'd never really kind of customized the colors. I think I turned something green to see if it would get me extra points or something in my green room, but I'd not really got into like customizing full sets of furniture or anything. But yeah, then I heard that he can customize fossils for you and make miniatures, which is really cool. So that would be something that I would still do maybe. Yeah, I think that Cyrus is a kind of untapped feature for me. I did the same thing. I, I kind of changed the colour of a table once or whatever, but since then I've just sold those crystals and haven't really bothered with him since then. Totally. Those crystals are a nice little earner mm. <laughs> with the sweet bells. Oh man, when you've got the shovel and you break apart all the extra rocks in town and they're all crystals, incredible. You know, when you bash it, it just spits out crystals instead of bells. Have you ever had that thing? What, you get more than one crystal? There's always one rock in your town every day that if you hit it with a shovel, it spits out loads of bells. Yes, yes. I've got those. And then there's one which is a fake rock that has the crystal in it. Yeah, so um, on some days, that one that you hit with the shovel that spits out bells, it will just spit out crystals. Oh, wow. And it'll spit out like eight crystals instead of eight bags of bells. No, I didn't know that. And then you've got like all the crystals and that was, that's like mega payday. But I guess if you're into customising stuff, it's also mega customised day with Cyrus. But I'd never got into it. Like you said, never got into kind of customising stuff. But I did get into the thrill of it being a, an all crystal bonanza day. And now we know that the chance of enjoying an all crystal bonanza day can be increased by following Katrina's sage advice. That's got to be worth the 500 bells it cost for a reading. And there you have it. Six steps closer to perfection. Sure, you won't need to do all that to earn official perfect town status, which seems mostly to be concerned with plants, flowers and public works. But that's only half the story. Just be careful not to get carried away. Whether it's furniture sets, clothes or even villagers, collecting stuff can be a big deal for some players of Animal Crossing, but can they take it too far? Martin thinks so, while for Ed, stuffing your pockets to breaking point can add an exciting frisson of tension to spice up the game. One thing that troubled me about the GameCube version is it was the first time I'd really come across people using guides to essentially ruin a game. I knew people that would time travel in the game where you change the clock mm, yeah. to to move back and forwards to get the things that you need. I believe the European version of Animal Crossing had a code system, which maybe all versions have, but maybe the European version had it to get things that weren't available because we didn't have e-readers. Mm. I might be wrong in that assumption, but you could definitely enter codes to receive items. So I remember a bunch of people I mean, really aggressively like doing that, like looking online for the guides, for the codes, time traveling. It felt like kind of... The game is so much about exploration and playing and interacting. It kind of feels like you're missing the point to start jumping all over time and kind of a collecting marathon. Mm. The game has so many things to collect. I think if you're really impatient and you just want that stuff now, you just want to be able to blast through it and do what's needed. I feel that's against the spirit of the game. I think you're right. I think you're right. For me, it's like when people rage quit on games. If you like the competitive aspects of this game so much, why do you invalidate it by rage quitting? Because you just want to win. Yeah, and that, complete just, that collection, or that's, yeah, it's just, I find that that completionist compulsion I've tried to solve within myself after many years, and so now I kind of see it from the outside and think, oh, this looks less fun. The way you're playing this game looks less fun, but I guess they're games; they're meant to be fun, and if your kind of fun is obsessively, yeah, collecting stuff. If you want to get a reputation as a time traveler around town, <laughs> then that's what's going to happen. You might be shouted at by an angry mole. I do wonder if that'll, if that'll ever be built into the game as a thing that you can do legitimately. Like if mm. you pay this, maybe Doctor Shrunk becomes a Doc Emmett Brown type figure. <laughs> maybe, yeah, I I, I wouldn't like so. it personally. Yeah, no. I feel like infinite storage detracts for, for a collector. Yeah, that that is some of the tension in the game comes from. Storage problems. <laughs> very, very low. You have to have, I mean, even you have to have, you know, in any any narrative, you have to have some tension. But you know, it doesn't have to be violent tension. No. But inventory management is its own kind of tension. It is, yeah. Actually, having to clear out old letters all the time, or having your pockets being so limited, is a yeah. bit, bit irritating. I wouldn't say it's tension exactly. It's only tension when. You really want to collect an insect or shoot down a balloon or something, and you haven't got your item mm. in your pocket ready for 
getting it straight away. Can you run back to your house, try and get it in the well, I, I tend to use letters as a place to store extra items and stuff. Right. Oh, I think I did that as well. Yeah, but remembering which letter's got your item in is, can be quite stressful. But, you know, these are very mild problems compared to some other video games, so... Indeed. Yeah, it's all relative. So Martin, before we get started, there is something I wanted to mention. There's a bit of a rumour going around town about you at the moment. Uh, they say that you're a bit of a stump maker. Oh. You care to say anything about this? A bit of a stump maker? Yeah. This refers to me chopping down trees. Yeah. Yeah, I, I chop down trees. Why is that? Sometimes, you know, I want to replant trees everywhere. You know, I want to make the village have uh, pathways of trees. Right. And so I was, you know, spent a lot of time trying to kind of move trees around and make it nicer. But, you know, ultimately, I couldn't get the job done. So it's for the good of your town. It's for the good of the town. All right, good. From High School Club, I'm your mayor, David Fair. And this is Time Capsule, the part of the show where we visit the lost town of one of our guest mayors. In this episode, it's Martin. So, Martin, you're about to go back to your town for the first time since when do you think? It's got to be at least a year. I think I kind of check in on the town once a year, try and do the weed game. I can never find the last weed. And I uh... give up and go home. Pretty much. <laughs> And this is a uh, new leaf on the 3DS. Uh, correct. Okay. Well, why not go ahead and open your time capsule? Okay. I'm going in. I share the town with my wife. I'm the mayor though, but she's probably done a better job of running the town than me from the shadows. Isabel, hello there, Mayor Martin. In Steen, it's Saturday, September 9th. It's called Steen Town, but it doesn't fit. You know, my name is Steenton. Oh, yeah. now I see. Thank you, thank you. Well then, shall we get started? Say, it's been forever since you were last here. Well, I hope you don't mind, but I've been doing my best to fill your shoes while you were away. I always knew she was trying to climb the ranks of power mm. until she could stab me in the back. But now that you're back again, have fun running Steen. They're very liberal about what the mayor should or should not do in this town, which is really weird seeing as they foist it upon you when you first enter. Pete's here. Oh, great timing, Martin. I have a bunch of letters addressed to Judith, but Judith's mailbox is full. <gasps> Could you ask Judith to clear out some old letters so I can deliver the new ones? I'm counting on you. This is interesting. So this is the first time actually I've spoken to someone who is sharing a town with someone else. So I've never seen that dynamic before, and it seems odd that it does fall upon you to, well, it's just as the mayor, to one one more thing. I mean, I, I'll send I'll send her a, a text after this, but not a letter. Well, I need to tell her real life, right? That's what Pete's right. getting at. Pete's wandering around. I also have mail. I've got three letters. I can't hold any more letters. Classic. So I'm going to go through the rigmarole of dumping my letters. Uh, classic. Using all the letters as uh, extra pockets yeah. for items. Do you have a routine of a set number of items you'll put in those other uh, letters? Yeah, uh, on, only five, top row only. I've got 41,000 bells in my pocket. My dear Martin, I'll be having a get-together to celebrate my birthday. If I invite you, will you come? Since I'm giving you this honour, please don't let me down. That's very entitled. Ron Pekin. But I like Pekin, so you know. So you remember that villager? There's someone that yeah, yeah. has been there she, forever? She, she wasn't, she's not an original Steentowner. She moved in later. I can't remember from, from where. But obviously she came to Steentown one day and liked it. It's a great town. Run spectacularly well. I can... I can I went for, oh, I've got another letter. Dearest Martin, I'll be throwing a party at my house and I really want you to come. You wouldn't deny my one birthday wish, would you? Excited to be yours, Ed. Ed is a is a hot as a blonde horse. You're um, telling me. <laughs> He's a good guy. Um, okay, I'm going to walk around. Well, if you're outside your house, why not take us on a tour of your house? Oh, okay, I will. So I am. Um... Can you remember off the top of your head? What yeah. It's like? so, so so not looking. Uh, basically, my house is is a very very incomplete project. My pride and joy in Animal Crossing was my house in the GameCube Animal Crossing, where I'd gotten the rare wallpaper that was the I think it's called Boxing Crowd or something like that. Mm. Looks like a wrestling crowd. I, I loved. Oh, it. I see. So actual people in the background. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a um the, the fancy wallpaper merch. It's a special it's a special oh, yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. And so my dream 
for my house in in Steentown was to basically build a wrestling arena. Um, and I, over time, collected all collected lots of parts, but never got that wallpaper. I don't even know if the wallpaper is in New Leaf. I assume it is. And there's a cockroach running around my house right now. So I'm walking in. I'm walking in. And you can see already that there are kind of guardrails everywhere as if it was surrounding a wrestling ring. There is a lovely kind of 80s boxing slash wrestling logo carpet, a special carpet. There's a little table with a ring bell on it and a stereo. The idea was to replace the stereo with like a sound system for the wrestling arena. There's a ladder and a trash can, you know, all things you might see in a gimmick wrestling match. There's some nice lighting around the ring and some LED picture boards above the entryway to an extra room. It's meant to be like a, a, an entrance point. If you were a wrestler, you could walk, get into the ring and have fun. I should say there's also a wrestling ring right in the middle of the room. So when you said it was incomplete, I mean, this is 95% complete. You, you just needed that wallpaper. Yeah, I need the wallpaper and then it just needs a few more bells and whistles, like a few more lights. You've already got whistles and, and bells. That's, I've got bells. Right. I've definitely got bells. So instead, the wallpaper of the room is just the Steamtown flag tiled. Right, and what is the flag? It, the flag is a hamburger on a blue background with a yellow and white star trim. It's a very majestic flag. It, it flies proudly next to the town hall. And was it an original design or was it something that you oh, copied off the... No, uh, it's an original design. Mm. It felt right at the time. I don't eat hamburgers personally, but... My wife, who I share the town with, loves them. So, you know, if anything, this, this flag is a symbol of, of our relationship. So I'm going through into the back room right Maybe now. Maybe the, the true power behind the uh, the mayorship. Possibly. I'd say, basically, the, Judith was never happy that I was the mayor. But it's my console and I bought the game. So thus I was the first one to play it and became the mayor. She came in later. And if you look around town, you'll see that her house is bigger, it's nicer. It's more complete, it has more rooms, it, it, the rooms have themes, but unfortunately she would have to ask me to run all the ordinances that she, that she wanted mm. and ran. And there, there was a little bit of a, a struggle there, that's why we don't share a console anymore and in future Animal Crossings. She'll be using her own console on her own game. But I'm in one of my back rooms right now and it's just a mess, it's just like a storage room. Lots of things in there that were meant to be for other themed rooms that I never started working on because I never finished my first one. This one kind of has like a locker room feel. It was meant to be the locker room. There's exercise equipment for, for my imaginary wrestlers. It's a dump. It um, sounds appropriate though. I mean, it, even, you know, if it's a locker room that's been turned into a dump, that still sounds like something that would happen in a, you know, a, a wrestling arena that's fallen the hard times, has a shortage of space. I'm glad that you feel that way. This place, it definitely feels like there's hard times. I'm walking into another room and again, it's a tiny room. There's actually a gyroid in it, which is unusual for me because in New, New Leaf, I made the decision to not keep any gyroids. Why, fact, why, would, why would you not keep any gyroids? In the original Animal Crossing, I, I had to keep creating rooms for gyroids. Like in, to, I wanted to collect the gyroids and then make some kind of like musical cacophony with them. Mm -hmm. So much so that it's, it, it became my, it overtook you know, making a wrestling arena is my number one interest. And there's just not enough room for the gyroids. You can't manage gyroids that well. It sounds to me like you became a bit of a hoarder. I did. I was a gyroid, a gyroid hoarder. hoarder. It started in the basement. Then the basement grew too small. Mm -hmm. And then the gyros had to start being placed elsewhere. And next thing you know, my whole house was full of gyroids. So I told myself in this one, I've got a no gyroids policy. So the fact there is one there is quite unusual to me. It probably is there through some act of needing to give me some inventory space. I just ha There's a cockroach in every room downstairs. It looks like it was meant to be a computer lab. It just has a gumball machine in it. Could it be an IT training room? Could be. Wrestlers need careers after their bodies break down. They need to have social media training as well. It's true. Look I'm at sure. this. You can't even enter the top room. You can't yeah. even enter it. There's, there's an oven. There's two ovens in the way. A spinning wheel of fortune board, a giant ice cream cone, and assorted furniture. It's, it's a, it does look like a hoarder lives here. And I guess that's true. All I cared about was the wrestling project. And it's it's just, it, it breaks my heart to be in this room, to tell you the truth. I'm going to leave. I need to leave. Okay. Should I take you around the rest of the, the rest of the town? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm still just contemplating that lone gyroid and, and how it got in there and whether it was you that put it in there. Or if it somehow 
found its way in there in the, in the years that you've been away. Like the trope where you try to throw away the cursed object but it keeps coming Well, that's back exactly what I was thinking, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, found its way in. It's very un it's so unusual it would be there because I've got none. I immediately sell them. A leaf is hanging out. Leaf is hanging out around one of the village's um, attractions. The uh, What do you call these things? To the standee? The King of Hearts standee, that's right. right. Uh, over here, we've got another standee. It's the Steamtown mascot, the uh, anthropomorphic burger. It is the burger from the flag, except it also it has uh, dress gloves, Sonic the Hedgehog shoes, and it says cool above it in big yellow letters. The burger is the same as on the flag, but then, uh, you know, we decided that we needed a town mascot, and here he is. The cool burger over here, you can see... I've just left some uh, pitfall seeds hanging around. So these pitfall seeds then haven't been buried, they're just on the floor? Yeah, just on the floor. Okay. Just on the floor. Seems like you're asking for trouble there. I think so. I like, I like, I like my villagers to have a sense of humour. You know, that's what keeps them in Steen Town. Like, as you saw, we haven't had any levers. Not according to the post, anyway. Hmm. Oh, hello. The tent is in the central plaza. Bug off? Is it green? It's red. Oh. Uh... This is something I wish I'd spent more time with in New Leaf, the art collecting. Again, another dream of mine would be to, to, to have a museum wing that's full of just the fake art. You know, after the wrestling venue, my next dream was to have very meaningful gallery exhibitions at the museum. And I think if you go into the storage units in the house, you'll, you'll see there's a lot of other group themed things. Oh, uh, I've arrived at... Um, Another player house, but this player doesn't exist. This was kind of a uh, secondary house that was created in order to trial themes. Yeah, like a showroom. If you were to go upstairs, would you would you find that I don't player think it was asleep? Upstairs. Was there an upstairs? I don't know. I was wondering what presence the other players have in, in the town, because I remember in Let's Go to the City, you could go and see the other players asleep when you weren't mm. playing. Judith feels like she has a presence because Pete is telling me to... to bring her back to the town. To be honest, the town is nothing without her. Judith's house is probably the number one attraction. Taking you past the flower bed clocks there to remind me of a... Uh, of a... Uh, the time? Of the time, and also very similar clock in, in Portsmouth, where I'm from. I'm taking you to Judith's town. So as you can see, we go through this massive perimeter of perfect apple trees, and then some evergreen trees, and you make it to Judith's house and you can see what we have here is a really lovely place. There's a premium design standee of a cat looking out of a tree. There's a kind of gingerbread pathway around the mm -hmm. house that seems to be, a, be been eroded a little bit over time. There's a kind of toy block fence around the house. It's a really massive house with kind of a checkerboard chateau style roof. It's quite a statement. It's a state. It's a stately home, I think. Uh, Judas mailbox is absolutely rammed. It's really aggressively shouting at me. I, I will text Judith after this. So I'm going in the house, and yeah, you can see already we're dealing with a much more house proud. But Judith, Judith has cockroaches showing you again. She hasn't been there in a while. We've entered what appears to be a log, a very warmly lit log cabin. Eclectic tastes on show. Got some tasteful white furniture, comfortable. A baby grand piano, a classic London telephone box, money cats, a toy soldier, a roaring log fire, a totem pole. It does have a little bit of a, a Great Northern vibe mm. <laughs> about it. Um, and a, a big pipe organ. It sounds very eclectic, but I think it's working out. There's something that comes together about all these disparate elements. Something cosy yet exotic. Exactly. Going through into her back room, you can see again another room that's been maxed out in size. This appears to be her kitchen. We've got, looks to be a classic pizza oven, a cauldron, <laughs> a chocolate fountain, and a toadstool table, which seems to have a cherry pie on top of it for some reason. Very lovely. A thematic reason, maybe? Possibly. I mean, she, she might have been thinking of Twin Peaks when she made the house. It seems to have deviated from this theme, though, um, over time. I did ask once if I could live in her house, and I think she said I could. So I'd like to see this as my home as well. Well, I've been busy trying to, you know, stimulate the economy with with sport events. Yeah, I mean, you've been you've not had time to work on a house like that because you've been busy grafting for the town, haven't you? 
Exactly. I'm glad that you understand. And it's really interesting, actually. I think that she uh, she's made the basement with me in mind by the looks of it. Because if you go in there, there's a Mario Brothers flagpole. There is, there's a whole section for musical instruments. There is a tabletop arcade game. There is an upright arcade game. There's a pinball machine. There's a Wii Fit board. And there's a Virtual Boy. It's the Virtual Boy that clues me off that she's made the house because I think she gave, she bought me a Virtual Boy in real life as a birthday present one year. This is very heartwarming right now. Very nice. I'm glad that I came to Judas' house. My place is just a pit of despair. This is this is a this this is a place where a really a functional human being lives. A functional human being with a real sense of grandeur, though, as you can see by mm. the external the external of the house. <laughs> So, Martin, we have convened again to pick up where we left off exploring your town because we were actually uh, interrupted last time having to participate in and run a splat ornament. It was a great success. It was. It was, it was a great, great success, but not as great a success as today's venture into Steentown will be. Here we are on the main street of Steentown. We have a massive TNT Emporium. So what stage is it at? What, uh, what level have I'm you got? not sure if it's the final level, but it's definitely a very high level TNT Emporium. Is, is it a department store? It's a department store, yeah. I think that's probably the best it gets. I mean, I do a lot. My main thing in Arrowhouse is training. I want to, you know, I want to get those wrestling parts for my house. So I'm in the shop every day. And also, I want to make sure that I have as much furniture that could work in other configurations of things I want. Oh, going straight to the albums. That's, that's, that's got to do it. I love getting the album covers, probably one of my favourite things. And I just tend to buy them more whether I own them or not mm -hmm. to make sure I never miss one. Mm -hmm. uh, money's not really an object in Steentown. But one thing I do have to do is check at the top floor because today might be the day that my wallpaper's there. If you remember, I'm, I really want to have the wrestling wallpaper and because i refuse to look at guide for animal crossing i don't even know if if that wallpaper is in the game or can spawn here but i like to believe it's in every game don't know if they if the developers remove the wallpaper options or if not. it was here do you think it would really be in gracie grace's showroom does gracie just deal with fancy stuff i think so but i mean do have a look anyway i don't even have oh, that's too fancy Oh, so make the room like like a cake no, for one hundred twenty four thousand pounds. i can see the idea of impeccable sound taste is a bit Outside your comfort zone, hon, I don't come here to get spoken to like that. I've come here looking for wrestling wallpaper. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe you could wander up to the uh, museum. Of course. The... Can you remember off the top of your head what special exhibitions you've got? Um, just like my wrestling arena, mm -hmm. some unfinished exhibitions. Ooh. There's one that's like a Nintendo room, which I assume almost everybody will try and do because it's the only sensible place to put the stuff, I guess. This would be the final phase of my career as mayor would be to fill out the museum. Your legacy. My legacy, exactly. And I never I never got that far, as you know. Just disheartened that the wrestling project never got finished. Crippled me. Ideally, not everything would be Nintendo themed. It just felt that they, I had a lot of Nintendo stuff and it should probably go somewhere. I think the, in, in the end, what would have happened was one or two of the rooms would be Nintendo themed and the other two would be different permanent exhibits. And next time I play Animal Crossing, for real, I think I'll be trying to be a little bit more creative with my museum space. Again, failing Steentown as the mayor. Judith should have been the mayor. The more I think about it now, the more I realise she should have been the mayor. Well, you didn't. You weren't to know. I, wa I wasn't to know. But I think, speaking of Judith and how good she is, um, if you go into the, f the, 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 the fossil exhibition, you'll see that I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it's complete. Let's have a, let's have a walk around. Got some wonderful T-Rex, Triceratops, that one that's like a T-Rex but isn't, Velociraptor, Stegosaurus. Yeah, I think it's safe to say this is complete. And I think I remember being surprised that there was no grand proclamation of, mm. of, uh, of joy when it, from the characters when it was complete. And it was reaffirming that Animal Crossing is your game. Like, why would Blathers care? I guess, I guess if anyone should care, Blathers should care. Yeah. But I don't remember that happening. But it might be that Judith put the finishing touches on it. She might have got the, the ceremony. She might yeah. have got the ceremony. Judith, is there meant to be a ceremony? Did I miss a ceremony? I don't know. If I missed a ceremony, I'd be very displeased. Here in the museum was meant to be all of the 
the authentic art. We've got a busted Nefertiti here. And then I was going to create a separate exhibition upstairs with the fake art for, you know, because I think, you know, as, as an art critic, I thought that was actually more interesting. Understanding, you know, the uh, <laughs> the relationship between, you know, fake art and the audience and that, that kind of thing. What was your approach for the art? Would you look for clues online or would you try yeah. and do it entirely by eye? Just try and do it by eye. That's why I failed. <laughs> Judith is probably more an, an online looker. I think you have to be genuinely familiar with the art to understand, to, to pick up which ones are real sometimes. Yes. Sometimes it's kind of comedy errors and you can clearly see that it's fake, but other times... I'm assuming the Mona Lisa is probably like the easiest one to determine. Now we're going to move into the campsite area. So you've got a bamboo grove. Yes, we have a bamboo grove. We wanted to make sure that the town felt there was a lot of diversity in terms of the environment. So down here you enter a kind of a more bamboo grow kind of tropical area of steam town. as you're at the beach we want you to be reminded of you know fun times drinking cocktail out of a bamboo decanter here we have the campsite we've had lots of friends visit the campsite over the years it seems to be a great destination for uh, traveling villagers if your villagers feel like getting away i'd recommend they come to steam town's great bamboo grove camping site there may be pitfalls outside. I don't know why. Here's one of my projects, the Ooh. lighthouse. Oh, yeah. Now, as you can tell, we're a seaside town. <laughs> it's very smart. <laughs> like most Animal Crossing villages, we're a seaside town. And uh, being from the seaside IRL, I thought that we needed to have a lighthouse. It can be seen from far and wide. We don't have a lighthouse keeper. That's the main problem. But it was very important to me. Does it know. light up at night? I believe it does. It's been a long time since I've come to the town, David. It may not be functional anymore. But yeah, it felt important to me to have a lighthouse because I like lighthouses in real life. They remind me of the better parts of home. An unfinished wrestling arena that contrasts with the ostentatious home of a certain other resident, a burger flag, and some carefully curated exhibitions. You too can visit the lost town of Steentown by using your dream suite. Just go to highscoreclub.com and click on Astown to find Martin's dream address in the show notes for episode 5. You'll also find a link to Martin's Instagram profile, at Steenton, which you can follow if you want to be treated to some premium influencer content. We've just got time for your letters now, and... Oh. This is exciting. It's not often we get sent a package through the post here on Astown. And, um... And there's a letter to go with it. It says, Dear David, I was out for one of my nocturnal walks recently. The air was crisp and I could see the moon. Anyway, I happened to be passing by the roost. Must have been sometime after midnight. I thought I'd take the opportunity to stop in for a warming cup of decaf usual. But as I approached the cafe, I heard an unexpected sound coming from inside. That was when I switched on the portable cassette recorder I carry with me at all times. Please play the enclosed tape, which I believe will be of interest to your listeners. Yours, Shelby. What a tale. Well, I guess I'd better go ahead and play it.
Wow, now that was pretty special. Thank you for sending that in, Shelby. It seems remarkably lucky that you would be passing the roost during the middle of the night and just happened across K.K. Slider jamming with his pals at the cafe after hours. In fact, wait a minute, Shelby? There's this guy called Shelby who makes Animal Crossing-inspired music under the name Cat Beats. Could it be the same one? Have I been had? I suppose I'd better put a link to Cat Beats in the show notes, just in case. In the next and final episode in this season of Astown, we'll be talking about what happens when Animal Crossing and real life mix. And we'd love to hear your stories about how Animal Crossing has impacted your life. Whether it's inspired you to do something, or you have great memories of playing it with other people. Tweet at High Score Club or email astown at highscoreclub.com with your stories. If you enjoy the show, please tell any other Animal Crossing fans in your life, especially if you're part of an online community, so that we can spread the word. That's it for this episode. I'm heading off now to rearrange all my furniture. Astown is produced by me, David Thayer, for High Score Club. Huge thanks to my guest mayors, Charlie Jameson, Ed White, Ho Yi Lee, Christina Baczynski, Martin Steenton, and Timothy Winchester. To find out more about these wonderful mayors, including the dream addresses so you can snoop around their towns, please visit highscoreclub.com. Special thanks this time to Cat Beats, the track KK Slider Jammin' After Hours appears courtesy of Swedish Columbia. Thanks to the generous creators on freesound.org for their royalty-free sound effects. High Score Club is a little video game club for good games and equally good people. Find us on Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr and Twitch. Pro tip, that's high spelt H-I. Astown is not even slightly affiliated with Nintendo. Any favourite KK Slider tunes? Oh, can we play some? How'd you add the new records in? I've forgotten. It's a little plus button. And also, it's good to have. It's good to have two of every song, isn't it? Just so, um, just so you, <laughs> just so you can put one on the wall. Which is something. That's something I will do in the next one. I want a gallery of KK Slider. That's a great so, idea. Yeah. Oh my, there's so many good ones. Just look at it. Just look at them. Look at how good they all are. Who ever had the job of doing these? Look at the KK Country. It's so good. Oh. I think it's, it's, it's a funny character because he's got such a cute face, but he's quite a right on kind of dude. Yeah, I'm not a massive fan of DJ KK, if I had to say anything. Mm. I feel like I feel like we could have got a different character because I feel like it kind of I don't know. I don't like this kind of split personality he's got. <laughs> um there's too many to choose from, David. 
Well, what music had you chosen for your house? Oh, that was KK Rock. Right. Okay, so for my house, when you walk into the house, you're meant to kind of get... So turn it off. That, that, that's good. So when you walk into the house, it's meant to evoke a wrestler's entrance. Right, right. right. So KK Rock, you know, you're coming out, you're getting energised, you're going to slam someone to the canvas. It's going to be great. I like them all, David. I, I wouldn't like to pick between them, but just the, the, just the feeling of hearing him sing... And that's another thing. The fact that the live performance is different mm. to the recorded version mm. you get means there's always something special about seeing him live. And just that watching, watching, um, hearing him sing over the end credits. How many games have you wanted to see the end credits of more than once? Yeah. Animal Crossing, one of the few with Capcom versus Tatsunoko because of its, its uh, shoot em up credits. <laughs> yeah. Right. Lovely. It's like try, uh, trying to ask me to choose between my kids. Because you don't have any, it's impossible to choose. <laughs> yes. <laughs>